All rise. All right, so we're still in day two. The jury is coming back from lunch, and I believe the next witness we're about to hear was one of the people who was threatened with punishment for not showing up to court. Can you please state your first and last name for the record? Quentin Carlson. And then please find your last name. C-A-R-L-S-O-N. Can you go by a link name sometimes? Q. And how old are you? 50, uh, 50, sorry. And are you, can you look over at that board there? Uh, I can't see it, I'm sorry. Well, here, actually, I'll hand it to you. Only in Zero 26. <laughs> are you in the y'all shirt there? I am. Okay. And so you were tubing with these folks on July 30, 2022? Yeah, my birthday. Was it your? Was that your actual birthday? Yes, sir. Was tube is was tubing on the river kind of a tradition for your birthday? It it was. It was something you, my wife had started before she passed. So it was our sixth year going down the river. And had you tubed on that river before? I had, but not in years. Normally we went down the Namakagan, but due to some issues we'd had there, we changed the venue. While you were tubing, at some point, did something catch your or your group's attention? Yes. What was that? Um, we had come around to Ben and noticed uh, a group of teens that were calling and beckoning, beckoning us to come help them. Um, at that point, um, I had told my boys to stop our tubes and I observed for a minute and uh, at that point I saw Mr. Mew charge their tubes and stop the tubes from progressing down the river. <clears throat> I saw him acting in an aggressive and, and drunken manner um, and I just thought that it probably was going to end badly if it didn't de-escalate. Uh, I asked my two boys to go over there and uh, make sure nothing happened. I never dreamed it would turn into what it did. And what was your, did you have a specific fear regarding escalating, whether that was Mew or the boys, both, one or the other? Um, at, the, at that time, the boys were all sitting in their tubes, but the way he was acting and the way he was um, you know, he was st literally standing, the tubes had kind of wrapped around his legs and he was stopping the tubes from going down the river. And I thought at some point, you know, the boys at that point were still calling out for us to come help him, but I thought if those boys get off their tubes, they're going to beat the brakes off of this guy. And he's drunk and, uh, you know, obviously wasn't making good decisions. So, um, we own a bar and, uh, my boys are good at de-escalating fights and calming people down. Um... I disagree. And so I told Tony to go over there, and I told Dante to follow him. Um, the girls were the first off their tubes and had run over there ahead of it. But uh, it was Tony and Dante that I had asked to go over there. At some point, did the incident turn physical? Um, it did. And uh, to be honest with you, I, I was still across the river. Uh, the river was very rocky at that point, and uh, I, I don't walk so well. Um, and, uh, but Maddie had come running to me. He punched me, he punched me. And the next thing I knew, I had a string of boys running at me. You know, first my son Tony, and then Dante yelling, Daddy, stab me. And I just remember thinking, stab you? Stab you with what? You know, I, I mean, I just, I was bewildered. And... Did I just you, didn't realize what was going on until I saw AJ literally disemboweled. Um, and at that point, I, it just erupted into chaos, and we tried to get the kids to the riverbank. And uh, Dante went running up river for help. Uh, I mean, it really just it was a matter of seconds, and it the whole thing had changed. 
So. And today you used um, Nikolai Muse. I think you called him Mew, but fair, you didn't know his name at the time. No, no, I had no idea who he was. You didn't know the other group of tubers either. No. So you did you were you kind of over by your tube still? I was still on my tube until Maddie came running over. It was after she said that he punched me, he punched me, and I started looking at her face, and um, and then literally within seconds, you know, the boys were coming at me, and I was trying to assess their injuries and trying to make sense of it all, you know, in mere moments. Did you see anything on Maddie's face of injury? Yeah, I mean, her eye was red and swollen. Like so. skin around the eye, or what do you mean? I mean, her cheek was all puffed out. I mean, it was clear that she had been struck. Given how far away you are, you didn't actually see any of the stabbings or the... No, I saw Dante strike Mr. Mew, um, and I had yelled out, you know, to stop, because I didn't know what was going on at that point. Uh, that was prior to knowing that he had hit Maddie and, and prior to... Uh, um, prior to knowing that anyone had been stabbed. Um, did you see where Nikolai went? I didn't. I honestly was, I was worried about my kids. I, I wasn't paying attention to where he went. I, I almost, you know, I, I was looking at my kids, not looking upriver, not looking at what was going on. Um, AJ's injuries were so severe and I hate to admit it, but I was worried about my son, Tony, and my son, Tony, was taking care of AJ, and there was nothing going to pull Tony off of AJ, and so um, I, I really was just very focused on, on Tony. I know I had sent Sheena and a couple others, uh, Sheena and uh, Janelle, upriver to, after Dante to make sure he was okay and to try and get us some help you know um, there I knew that shortly down river there was a uh, sheriff's stand where they monitored the river I just didn't know how far it was i had actually thought it was closer than it was and so I hoped that they were able to get a hold of the sheriff there nothing else judge Mr. Nelson Mr. Carlson I right. want to ask you some questions about your birthday okay sure um, it wasn't just your birthday, it was also celebration of Madison Cohen's birthday as well, correct? Um, no, that, not was, that I'm aware. Would it surprise you if Madison Cohen testified that it was a celebration of her birthday? No, it wouldn't surprise me. Okay. I, I mean... Do you know her very well? Through my kids. Okay. I've, I've gotten to know her much better since this incident. Sure. Um, on that day, though, fair to say it was... You and your friends, there was a, including you, there was like 11 of you. Is that right? I mean, I can count it for you. There was two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven of us, yeah. Um, and the 11 of you were celebrating, correct? Correct. And part of that celebration involved consuming alcohol. I get where you're going with that, but the reason we went to the Apple River, I put a limit on how much alcohol the kids could bring because we'd had a problem with drinking on the Namakog, and, and I didn't want a bunch of drunken people at my birthday that year. Sure, understood. But in the past, you... Uh, I wasn't drinking at all, so... Understood. A um, couple of things there. So you said that in the past you had trouble with people maybe in your group drinking too much when they were on the river. Absolutely. Okay. And when people were drinking too much on the river, in your experience, that caused problems, for lack of a better term? Well, we had the group size had grown to 50, 60 people in the past, and so we wanted to keep it a small, controlled group. Sure. Uh, and I'm asking about the previous time. I'm going to get back to July 30th, but you sure. mentioned something about the Namakog, and so I want to ask you some about that. Make sure. sense? That experience of yours was when... Down route as past... It goes to his credibility about what he's saying about today and his it, impressions. It was, it was raised in direct. I'll let, give you a little bit of latitude to explore. Your experience uh, on the Namakagan was that when people on the river tubing drink too much, it causes problems. Yes. Okay. 
So now back to July 30th. Mm -hmm. Okay. On that day, you're with your 11 people and everyone's celebrating, correct? Okay. Yes? I wasn't there. I'm trying to gather facts. Yeah, I mean, I guess I don't know what you mean by celebrating. We were quietly floating down the river until we were called upon. Lots of different ways to celebrate, correct? Sure. Sometimes it's just you celebrate with your words, right? Sure. Sometimes people consume alcohol as part of that celebration, correct? Absolutely. Sounds like you weren't doing that, right? That's correct. But other people in your group were, correct? Yes. And in fact, there's a photo that you have in front of you, which they're actually consuming alcohol in the photo, correct? That is correct. Is part of that photo in order to document not only the celebration, but the consumption of alcohol on that day on the river? I don't think anyone was trying to document the consumption of alcohol. It's just a coincidence that of the people in that photo, four of the people are actually consuming alcoholic beverages while the photo's taken? Yeah, I, I, I guess I don't think it was... I don't know that there was any exact intent in that. Um, you know, they were having fun. Sure. And part of having fun was for them to drink alcohol, right? I, I, I think you're putting a lot of emphasis on it when the emphasis wasn't there. I appreciate that maybe the emphasis wasn't. I'm just trying to gather the fact. They were drinking alcohol, yes? Uh, yes, we've stated that a couple times. Okay. Um, now, as you know, there's a, a, a couple of videos involving what we're here to talk about in this trial. Is that right? Yes. Have you seen any of the videos regarding what I happened? I have not there? seen it yet. Okay. So there's some things that you've said that are maybe in the video. And so I'm trying to put things into context with you, even though you haven't seen the video, if that makes sense. Okay. Sure. Um, what I gather from you is you were watching and at some point you see Nikolai Mew approach uh, this group of six teenagers. Is that right? Charge. Yeah. Okay. You use the word charge. Whether there's a video on it, we'd get to decide that, correct? But that's what you remember, correct? Yes. Okay. And as he goes towards them, he's coming from upstream, walking downstream. Is that right? Uh, no, he would have been downstream coming upstream. Okay. So your memory is he's coming... He was in front of them and walked, ran back up river at them. Okay. That's what your memory is. Well, that's what happened. It may or may not have been what happened, but that's what your memory is, right? Okay. Yes. Um, you would agree if we were going to rely upon your memory or the video, the video might be more reliable? Certainly. Okay. Um, at some point, you look over there, and um, Nikolai and you and these six, uh, did you know how many there were other than you said a group? No, they were sitting in their tubes, so I mean, I, and I didn't take a head count. Sure. If I told I, you that there's been identified six people in that group, would that surprise you? No. Sound about right? Certainly. I would have thought there was more, honestly. Okay. Um, and at some point, you look over to there, and you see Nikolai Mew standing in between the tubes in the direction that the tubes are trying to go downstream. That's what your testimony is? Correct. Okay. Show you what I've marked as exhibit number 101. Do you see that, sir? Yes. And you see on the bottom of this, it says upstream. Okay. And you see up there, it says downstream. Correct. And there's a red circle that says G2. Yep. And then there's six red dots over here. Do you see that? Yep. And then there's a blue dot with an M in it, correct? Correct. So if I were to tell you that G2 represents your group, number two, and that G1 represents the group of the six people, and the blue dot is Mr. Mew, does that make sense to you? Yes, I would say it's a little inaccurate, but okay. we were directly across the river, not behind them. Okay. So I'd move this G2 up to here? Correct. Is that more accurate? Yes. The six dots over here, does that appear to be accurate? Yeah, no, you weren't, you weren't documented. Does it look like what you saw? 
at what point? Um, because sure. during my viewing, they were they were all still sitting in their tubes. It wasn't until after Madison had been struck that everyone got up out of their tubes. Okay. And Madison was running towards me. So at that point, I really didn't see that. I, I was watching the kids. I had lost Let me, I'm gonna go back view of them. I'm going to leave this up here. Okay. Um, so is it your testimony that the six... The, the other group, I'm going to call them the, the teenagers, the six teenagers, they stayed in their tube until Maddie came over there? I believe so, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they were, they, were, I, they were sitting in their tubes calling for help. Okay. So your memory is two things. One is they were sitting in their tubes until Maddie came. Agreed? Yes. And your memory is that they were calling for help. Agreed? Agreed. And if the plane of that video contradicts that, would you agree your memory is wrong? Yeah, but yeah I mean, if it contradicts it. Okay. What you remember is that whatever you saw, it raised concerns that you wanted to make sure that something got de-escalated, correct? Correct. And so as a result of that, you told your two sons... Dante Carlson and Anthony Carlson to go over there, correct? Correct. And I believe you you spoke with the police about that, right? Yes. And what you told the police was, I was worried about that group of kids against one guy. I was worried that they were all going to gang up on him and something bad was going to happen to the old guy. Is that what you told the police? Absolutely. And the reason you told that to police is because that was what you were thinking. That was your actual worry, correct? Right? I mean, that was, that was my concern. And my concern was because he wasn't walking away. He was drunk and he was absolutely being aggressive to those kids. At one point, their tubes had wrapped around his legs and he was just refusing to walk away from them, even though they were screaming for anyone on the river to help them. Okay. Again, I appreciate that that's your memory. I want to unpack some of that. You said um, that it was your impression that Nikolai Mew was drunk, correct? Yes. And that was based upon your observation from 150 feet away for about 90 seconds? Yes. Okay. You don't actually know if he had consumed how much alcohol, do you? Well, I've had a lot of experience observing drunk people. Sure. It certainly fit the bill. Okay. But my question, sir, was you did not know if at all he had drank any alcohol. Agreed? I didn't know, in fact, he had drank any alcohol. Sure. Um, what you saw is essentially him perhaps uh, unsteady on his feet in the water, correct? No. Well, you couldn't smell him, agreed? No. And you didn't observe him drinking alcohol, agreed? Agreed. You couldn't hear him say anything, agreed? Agreed. You didn't hear him have slurred speech, agreed? Agreed. So whatever your conclusion was as to his drunkenness, it must have been based upon how you observed his body moving around. Agreed? It was more his behavior. Okay. And his behavior is your observations of his body moving around. Correct? Again, it wasn't because he was unsteady on his feet. Okay. It was the way he charged at the tubes. It was the just the way he carried himself. Okay. And again, this is all based upon your memory, right? Yes. So you sent the boys over there because you didn't want an old man, I think as you said here, uh, to get the brakes beat off of him, correct? That is correct. I, I think we've heard different expressions here. Maybe, uh, would that be similar to, to get a beat down, correct? Yes. Or maybe some other people call it uh, to get beat up. Would that be the same? That would be the same. And I think one witness it called it uh, getting his butt kicked. Same thing? Fair. Those are all kind of interchangeable Usually terms. The same thing. All right. That's what you were worried about, right? Yes. And part of that was based upon the fact that you saw that he was one man and there were these six teenagers, correct? No. I just thought it was because he was drunk. Sure. Okay. Um, would you have been worried about one drunk man on the river if there was one teenager standing there? I don't know if I would have or not. Okay. The words that you used to the police was, I was worried that they were all going to gang up on him, correct? I was. And the reason that you asked, uh, used the word gang up on him is because you were concerned he was outnumbered. Agreed? 
again, that wasn't my thought process. Okay. You just so. used the word gang up even though it wasn't your thought process? Yes. Okay. And then... Um, I thought he would continue to provoke them until they did something. Okay. And this is, again, your observations from 100 feet away? Sure. Did you hear any words that he said? No. All you heard was the boys screaming for help? Correct. Did you hear the boys say he's a predator? I heard him say that he's a pedophile. Okay. I didn't give it much credence at the time. Okay. You had no reason to believe that, correct? No. Um, you, had no you had no basis to know why that they were screaming pedophile, correct? No. But you would agree that your hearing them scream at this one man on the river pedophile, that increased your worries for that one man, correct? No. Sure. And that part of that is, is because when you call somebody a name that dehumanize them, dehumanizes them, that might mean that crowd is more willing to be violent against that person they've dehumanized. Fair to say? Action, judge. It's speculation. Overruled. You'd agree it's with that? Question. No. So the word pedophile to you didn't have any particular concern for you? No. It was the same type of word as jerk or some other pejorative term? I believe the kids were just throwing it out there, yes. Okay. And you didn't believe the kids were speaking the truth? I, I had no... Again, I wasn't worried about what they were speaking or what they were saying. I just saw a situation and didn't want it to escalate. And as a result of that, you sent your two boys over there, correct? Correct. And you sent, and Dante and Anthony, they're not teenagers, right? No. They're adults, correct? Correct. And you thought those, your two sons would be able to de-escalate the situation, correct? I did. Did you observe Dante go over there? I did. Um, did you observe Madison go over there? I did. And when you saw Madison go over there, did you see Nikolai Mew walk towards Madison? No, what I saw was Madison walk between the tubes and Nikolai and tell him to move on down the river. Okay. The six tubes were over in this direction, is that fair? Correct. Yeah, randomly, but does that look about right? Yep. And then um, Mr. Mew, would he be in this position? No, he was directly in front of the tubes. Right here? Yeah. Okay. I, mean, I, mean, I don't know. Is that what you saw? I mean, maybe six to eight feet in front of him if we're okay. talking spatial distance, but I mean, he sure. was but indirect. In generally that position? Correct. All right. And what you then saw was... Madison Cohen come from this position and stand in between him and the tubes. Correct. So if I put an MC here, would that be correct? Yep. She came from over that way. Yep. That's what you saw. Correct. Okay. What do you see her do then? She was pointing downriver and telling him to go, 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 get the fuck out of here, go. Okay. Did you hear her use the F word? I did. Okay. She was that loud? Yeah, because he wasn't, I mean, he was just staring at her blankly at that point. Oh. Okay. And you could see that from over here? Yes. And did then Dante come over there too? I don't remember the order that everyone went over there after Did that. eventually Dante get over there? Yes. Did Ryan Madison get over there? Yes. Did Anthony Carlson get over there? Yes. Did AJ Carlson get over there? Uh, AJ is not say, a I apologize. Sorry. AJ Martin? Yes. Sorry about that. No, it's okay. Blood and call on my own, but <laughs> I appreciate that. And then um, Janelle, uh, what's Janelle's last name? Duck is uh, the D, right? Yeah. Uh, Which color Janelle D? Fair enough. Okay. Yeah. And then there's a Gabby K as well? Yeah. All right. So and I believe there was another, there was someone else. There were some of the kids' friends I didn't know, so okay. all right, just all Matt. in the same area around Madison? Um, I, I don't know where they were standing. In, I mean, they were behind and to the right of Madison. I think some people had said they created, told the police 
that they created a wall between Nikolai Mew and the tubers. Is that what That's you possible. Is that what you remember? I, 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 I don't. I don't remember. Okay. But we know we have at least, if I put a Riley Matson, one person somewhere in this direction. I think Riley had actually walked up and stood next to her. Okay. So Riley could be here? Yeah. And then Dante's over in this area? I, again, I, I, I don't remember. Okay. Can I just, I mean, I, I know I'm just trying to make sure we have enough bodies over here, right? So can you put a big D here for Dante? Sure. And then we have uh, Tony's there someplace? Yep. AJ's there someplace? Yeah, yep. And I think Scotty stayed back and held the tubes with me. Scott's over here. Yeah. Gabby Kay's over here somewhere. I don't remember where Gabby was. Okay, well maybe just put her in the middle for now with a question mark. Yep. Janelle D is somewhere over there. Yeah, I, again, I don't remember. Uh, okay, this is somewhere here. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people from your group walked over there. That's how you remember it. Correct. Okay. And then there was the six teenagers, correct? Correct. So at least as we have it drawn here, at some point it looks like there's six of them, five of them, maybe two more that are standing there in Mr. Mew's space, right? Or in front of him, I should say. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't say they were in his space, but... Okay. In front of him. Yeah. Sure. Other witnesses have described Madison Cohn as being in Nikolai Mew's face. Would you agree with that? Judge, I'm going to object to the client. I think they can just ask the witness and not what they agree with previous testimony. Sustained. Do you agree the question? Do you agree that Madison Cohn was up in Nick Mew's face? I guess I wouldn't describe it like that. If somebody uh, else described it that way, would they be lying? Objection. Sustained. During this time when you're making these observations, you're still sitting in your tube over there at G2, is that right? I think I might have stood up out of my tube by that point, but yes, I was still with the tubes. Okay. Uh, fair to say you did not see Mr. Mew um, touch Madison Cone. Agreed? That is correct. Um, it was reported to you later by others, correct? It was reported to me by Maddie. Sure. And also by others, correct? Uh, you know, I don't think anybody else told me. Well, didn't you originally tell the police? In fact, uh, do you remember speaking with investigator John Schultz? Schultz? Do you remember speaking with him? I remember speaking to an investigator at the hospital, yeah. I told you this man over here with the badge on and the uh, tie and the gray shirt with the folder in front of him is investigator John Schultz. Does that refresh your memory as the person you may have spoke with? No, okay. but I'll take your word for it. I, I mean, uh, you spoke with a police officer at the hospital, correct? Correct. And you told the police officer she came, and I think you're referring to Maddie. Mm -hmm. I give you, she came. The next thing I know, she's like, he punched me, Quentin. He punched me. They said he slapped her, but whatever. Do you remember saying that to Mr. I don't Schultz? remember saying that, but I may, I may have. I won't argue that I didn't. And if you did say that, it was because that was the truth. Agreed? Agreed. And the truth on that day was that Maddie told you he punched her, but others said they saw a slap, correct? Correct. You didn't see anything, correct? I did not. And as you sit here today, you don't know who said slap, you just know some people said slap, correct? Correct. And the only person that told you, excuse me, let me say that, when you spoke with the police, when you told the police that Maddie was punched, you told her that's the only person that said that was Maddie, correct? Correct. And then you used they as a plural to say what the other people said, correct? Correct. Has anyone since then told you that they observed any of that group, Riley Matson, uh, Dante Carlson, Tony Carlson, AJ Martin, Gabby K, or Janelle D, told you that they saw a slap and not a punch? I don't recall that anyone has. I don't recall having a conversation. 
Well, then, obviously there was more severe injuries and those were the concern. Sure. I mean, it was clear that she had been struck. You could see the mark on her face. And you you uh, said that before. Let me ask you some questions about that. Sure. Where did you see that mark on her face? Uh, it was that her cheek was visibly swollen. There was pictures taken and, and uh, they were offered, but I don't know whatever happened to them. Okay, and we'll get to the pictures. Let me just put that aside here for a second. Um, can you point on your face where it is you saw the mark on her face? No. Okay. You don't have a memory of that? Uh, I remember her cheek and, and around her eye being swollen. When you say you have a memory, I mean... I don't know do if you... it was her left or right cheek. I don't... So no. do you have a memory of actually seeing it? Because when I have a memory, I see a picture there, and then I could see your face, and I could see the mark on one side or the other. You don't have that in your head right now? She was coming at me, so I would say it would have been the left side of her face. Okay. And again, I, I, it's not a quiz, but I just want to make sure that we're the same because somebody else had said they didn't get left and right correctly. And so can you just reach your hand up and touch the left side of your face where you think you saw it? Okay. What you recall is, did she point up to her left side of her face? She came over holding it. Okay. She came over holding the left side of her face, right? Yep. Um, and when she's holding the left side of her face, I imagine she's holding the left side of her face like you did with her left hand, correct? I believe so. Okay. When she walked over to that group, she had things in her hands, correct? I guess, uh, I, I suppose she probably did. Yeah. I mean, she had a phone, right? I don't know. She had a vape. Again, I, I, I don't know. And she had a white claw. Or... Right? If I showed you photos that said that she had those things in her hand, would that surprise you? No, it wouldn't. But okay. I, I can't say that I, I know what she had in her hand because I sure. don't. When she came back to you, she still had the phone, correct? Junction I think you just said it doesn't remember. I'm asking now when she came back. I'm asking a different time frame. Fair enough. You can answer the question. I still don't remember. Okay. When she came back, did she have the... Uh, can in her left hand? Again, I, I don't remember what okay. she had in her hand. Would it refresh your memory to see a still frame of her standing by the tubes afterwards speaking? Can I show that to you? Sure. I mean, I would just say Jack that around. We know what's in the video. He doesn't remember it. Sustain. I don't think this is a good use of our time. He doesn't remember the photos, may or may not show something different. Would you agree? If she's seen after she says that she got punched in the face on the left side of her hand and she walks over to you at G2, yeah. right? and if she's seen in the video over there holding a can in her hand mm -hmm. with a phone in her right hand, right? Yeah. she's got her hands full, correct? Okay. Would you agree with that? I mean, if her hands are full, yes, I would agree that her hands are full. And if her hands are speculation on what might be, it's a hypothetical. Well, come on up, please. This is the form, Judge. We're going to start over. So, yes, sustained. Is that Madison Cohen that you see in front of you with the blonde hair? That is correct. And she has a, a drink in her left hand? Yep. Uh, just to, is that you in the yellow shirt, sir? Yep. And then over here, does that appear to be Madison Cohen with the blonde hair and the one-piece suit? It's really not clear enough to say for sure, but... Yeah. The person who's got the blonde hair in the upper corner there with the uh, one-piece suit, does it appear as if that person has something in their left hand and something in their right hand? I couldn't say from that picture. <laughs> I'm not sure that matters. She came over clutching her eye, whether it was with the back of her hand, her forearm, or the front of her hand. She came over holding her eye. So your previous testimony, when you said she had her the flats of her fingers up against her eye, you're saying- I didn't say that's, that. I thought that, that's what you showed. So I, you asked me where on the face, and I used my hand to show where on the face. I didn't say that's how she was holding her hand. You did, I thought I did both, and if I was wrong, that's fair. Um, so tell me now, tell the jury now, what did you see her do in relation to the point, place on her face where she said she was punched? What did she do? Again, I don't remember. I just remember she was clutching her eye. Okay. Whether it was the front of her hand, the back of her hand, or her forearm, I couldn't say. Okay. Again, this all happened 
very quickly and I was able to see that she was okay, there was people stabbed, and that was my concern. And I appreciate that. If it seems like I'm judging you, I, no, I'm not I just trying to give be that clear. impression. I'm just trying to gather the facts so that the jury can make their decisions. Make sense? Yep. Okay. You'd said that there was a photo taken of this mark on her face. Correct. Did you take this photo? I did not. Her mother you, did. Okay. And this is something that was told to you? Yes. You didn't see the photo, did you? I think I did. Okay. Who showed you the photo? I believe her mother showed it to me. Okay. And when did her mother show you this photo? We all went and had lunch after the bail hearing. Okay. Um, so and I believe it was at, I believe it was that time at lunch that she showed it to me. It may have been here at the courthouse, but it was that time frame. Okay. Um, and do you uh, are you aware that Madison Cohn gave her phone to the police? She very well may have. I mean, I'm not aware of that. But is it your under? Were you told by somebody that the police just didn't want it? Is that what you were told? Well, it wasn't her phone. It was her mom's phone. Okay. So that was and, what, and yes, I, I was told that the photo was offered up and they said they didn't need it. The police just said, we don't need that photo in a homicide case. I don't know how they said it. Okay, that's fine. But that's what your testimony is. That is my testimony. That's what you were told by the Cohen family. That is what I was told by her mother, yes. Okay, okay wow, that's just a little bit hard to believe. <laughs> the police refused to accept evidence against a possible murderer. Whatever you say, buddy. That's all. Thank you. Mr. Anderson? Mr. Carlson, do you have a photographic memory? Absolutely not. Do you remember some details of events without remembering every detail? I do. I remember how you drove here today? I do. Remember how many lefts, first right turns you took? Nope. You remember some things from this incident, but not every single incident detail? I would say that's fair to say. Some things were burned into my brain that day. You said um, on cross that you, you thought Nikolai was just a drunk idiot. Remember that? I don't believe I used the term idiot, but I think that's fair. I might be mis misremembering too, so I don't, I don't mean to put words in your mouth if you think I'm wrong. Yeah, feel free to correct me. Um, and I think you said that your fear was he was going to keep antagonizing the boys until they did something. From what I witnessed, yeah. I'd watched them walk away from their tubes two or three times and then reapproach them. Your memory from your vantage point was that you could see Nikolai, Maddie, and then the tubes. So, like. I mean, I could see everything from my vantage point, but what I was focused on and paying attention to at different times varies. Um, you know, I. I think I was mainly focused on Mr. Mew and watching what he was doing um, versus, I, I, and obviously I could see Maddie interacting with him because I was watching him. But if you ask me what the other kids were doing at that point, I couldn't tell you. And your, your view is not a bird's eye view like that drawing? Absolutely not. So if there's parts of your group walking over or standing in between parts of your view is obstructed? Yep. And so Attorney Nelson drew, drew some locations of people up there. Do you actually remember that that's where those people were? No, I mean, I remember where we were in relation to their group. Um, we were almost in front of them when I got the boys to stop our tubes. Um, we were on uh, the opposite side of the river and uh, so Attorney Nelson asked you um, which cheek was it on Maddie? You remember that line of questioning? Yep. I think you said a couple times you didn't remember. Then he told you about how his memory works, and then you said left. Well, I'm just, I, again, I didn't want to say anything that I wasn't absolutely certain about. I remember it being the left-hand side, but... I didn't want to state that without being absolutely certain, and I wasn't absolutely certain that it was the left-hand side. He asked you to pick a side, and you picked? Correct. 
I don't have anything else. So I'm expected to just believe this guy, even though he's flippantly answering questions without any worries on whether or not his answers are correct. I don't even know what to say to that. Mr. Nelson. Okay. <clears throat> so just again, I would... when you say you remember it being on the left hand side, do you have an image in your mind of Madison Cohen's face on the left hand side having to mark? Is that what you see when you say, I remember it being on the left hand side? Correct. Okay. You don't see anything else in your head other than that, right? You don't have any other memory, correct? Well, I'm not sure what you're asking me. It's a poor question. Fair enough. I'm asking in particular about your memory regarding Madison Cohen's mark. And the okay. only memory that you have about Madison Cohen having a mark is the memory that you've told us about it being on her left side. That's the only memory you have, correct? Correct. All right. Thank you. You'd said you watched Nikolai Mew walk away two or three times, correct? Correct. And was that before, during, or after Madison Cohen had walked over there? Before. Okay. And when Nikolai Mew walked away from that group of teenagers those two or three times, did you see the teenagers just float downstream away from him? No, because he was in front of them. Okay, so when you said you saw him walk away, you mean he walked downstream from him? He walked downstream, he walked, at one point he walked around the side of him and around the back, he grabbed the tubes and stopped them from behind, and then he walked again in front of them, um, and he had started to walk downstream from him at that point, and that's when he turned around and charged at them. And I believe when he charged at them, Madison was off the tube and on her way over there and the boys were following. Okay. And you'd said that you had an obstructed view, but you could still see things, certain things. Well, I didn't right? say I had an obstructed view. I, okay, I thought you did, and so... Did no, he asked me, as, as they were walking over there, is it fair to say that at times it was obstructed? Okay, so at times it was obstructed. Correct. One of the things that wasn't obstructed is you observed your son, Dante Carlson, hit Mr. Mew, correct? That is correct. And you saw Mr. Mew go down into the water, correct? I saw him fall back onto his backside. Right. I don't know that I'd call it going down in the water. The water was very shallow at that point. Sure, the water was flowing over the ground, correct? Yes. <laughs> okay, it's still the river, correct? Yeah. Whether how deep the water is, he went into the water. Yeah, right? I was probably 10 inches deep at that point. Okay. He went into those 10 inches of water, agreed? Yes. And when you saw Dante hit him and he go down into those 10 inches of the water, that's when you yelled stop, correct? Correct. And your son didn't stop, did he? He was I, I don't know that I can say whether he stopped or not at that point. Did you see your son, Dante Carlson, hit Nick Mew when he was down in that 10 inches of water? I did not. Did you um, see A.J. Martin come up from behind Nick Mew and push him when Nick Mew was sitting in that 10 inches of water? I did not. Did you see your son, Dante Carlson, swing and hit uh, Nick Mew in the front while AJ's pushing him from the back? I don't know if AJ was pushing him from the back when Dante struck him or not. I did see Dante strike him from the front. I was unaware of the situation at that point. Didn't know why Dante had struck him. It was very out of character for Dante to hit someone. So I immediately yelled stop. Because you were worried? Because I didn't want it to escalate. That was the whole point of sending them over there, so that hopefully it wouldn't escalate. But it had escalated, right? It had. And then you wanted it to stop, correct? Absolutely. Nothing else. Thank you, Mr. Carlson. Uh, you may step down. So I don't know about you, but this guy reminds me of the kind of dad who grounds his kids when there's no beer in the fridge. He seemed to be willing to say anything or deny anything just to help the case against Mew. And I agree with him about a great many things. But unfortunately, I just don't think he's any more trustworthy than Mew. He couldn't even bring himself to admit that he could see Madison in that still shot from the video. 
He just seemed to get hung up on the words and the meanings of them. For instance, the picture of everybody drinking. He didn't want to admit that they were documenting their drinking. That may not be the word that you're thinking of or the action that you're thinking of in your head when you take the picture. But that's what you did. That's what everybody in that picture was doing. They were purposely drinking for the picture. They were posing with their alcohol, pouring it into their mouths as the picture was taken. So yeah, you guys documented your drinking that day. Well, except for him, he wasn't drinking. And that's another thing too. How is it that the only sober guy on the river that day remembers less about that day than even Mew himself? He made himself look kind of dishonest. Especially in those moments when you could tell he was trying to decipher what the defense attorneys were thinking and where they were going with their questions so that he could answer them in a way that might help the case against Mew. To him, that may seem like the best way to take down Mew, but in reality, all it really does is hurt this case. I just think the guy should relax, sit back, don't think about the questions, just answer them honestly. Because if you do anything other than that, the jury is going to pick up on it, and so are we. So I'm not going to call this guy a scumbag. Instead, I'm just going to leave it right there and move on to the rest of day two. If I'm not mistaken, I believe there are two more witnesses to go before we move on to day three. I'll be back soon with the next one. But I tell you what, I don't know about you, but I'm going to go to bed. Thank you. Um, it happens to me all the time. Dr. Jill won't even let me sleep in the bed anymore. <laughs> 